Это невозможная машина. Что ты сюда сделаете? Невозможно. Давай. Идиот. Что ты? Хотите? Ничего не поделать. Ничего не поделать. Что я тебе сказал? Сейчас мы разбились, поэтому ничего не поделаем. Давай, давай. Эй, ты. Эй, ты. Эй, Okay, where's his helmet, Jones? His helmet's on the head. Okay, watch this shoot that there is. It's right down there underneath. Somebody put it on his head. Get your head up against the track. Take that weapon down. Right, everybody? Down. When you come down, bring that with you. Richard, vehicle secure. Yes, sir. Move them a little faster than that. Step it out. All right, Sergeant Carpenter, let's go ahead and get these people segregated according to their rank. You take. Take this whining private over there. Hey! We don't remember you, Joe. He keeps talking, gagging. Down on your knees. Sergeant. Junior Sergeant. Get him down. Hey, you got to meet you on his deal. Okay. Get that corner right there. Hey, we're getting higher on the rank here. We got ourselves a lieutenant. A lieutenant? Oh, boy. Last meet him. Oh, we've been over there. Put him in the back of the interrogator if we want to see him first. Get over there. Ah! Sergeant Carpenter, who left that that gear on there spinning over? Why do you do that? What's the matter? Who do you do it? Sounds like he's freaking out to me. 
hit a hand with it? <laughs> 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 I go in there, okay. you. Yep, let's be close. Hi, officer. I don't care who you are, you're not going to be this cocky in a minute. I'm Sergeant Maine. I'm here to in-process you into this compound. What is your last name? Marazov. What is your first name, Marazov? Alexander. What is your rank? Private. Figures. What is your service number? Five four three six eight two one. What is your birth date, Marasov? Twenty one April nineteen fifty nine. What is your native language? Russian. That's the only language I speak. What level of civilian education do you have? Eight years. What paramilitary training have you had? Paramilitary training? I, I don't know. You're probably too dumb. What was your job within your unit? My job? I was just a rifleman. What was your mission at time of capture? Mission? They don't, they don't tell me anything. All right. What was your full unit designation? My what? All right. By full unit designation, I mean your chain of command from the lowest to the highest echelon to include type and designation. I was in the second motorized rifle squad, the second motorized rifle platoon, the first motorized rifle company, the fourth motorized rifle. I'm Sergeant Quinn with the prisoner disposition and evacuation section. We're going to evacuate you further back to the rear, but first I need to fill out this paperwork on you, so you need to answer some questions. Paperwork? What kind of paperwork? Just normal, routine questions. What's your last name? Chenyenko. Spell Chenyenko. C-H-E-R-N-E-N-K-O. What's your first name? Pavel. Spell Pavel. P-A-V-E-L. What's your middle name? Ivanovich. Spell Ivanovich. I V A N O V I C H. What's your rank, Chernyenko? I'm a private. What's your native language? Russian. What other languages do you speak? I speak a little German. Where were you born? In Karaganda, in Kazakhstan. What's your job within your unit? Oh, no, I can't tell you that. Tell me, Chernyenko. Uh... Exactly what were you doing out there when you were captured? I was trying to get the BTR started. With a wrench? Hey, listen. When those motor, to move, motor pool people get finished with a job, they usually more harm than good has been done. I was just trying to get the vehicle started. Well, if you know enough to get it started with a wrench, you should have been a mechanic. Hey, listen. I told him I went through a course in Karaganda but they told, told me I, they already had a job for me. So I didn't want to go against the system. Well, it's too bad they didn't know you already had a skill, isn't it? Well, it's not like I didn't say anything about it. Tell me, Chernyenko, just how good are you with a wrench, anyway? Hey, when something's broken, I usually can get it fixed. You know, this, this camp we're sending you to, uh, I have a friend at work assignments. Let me give him a call. Maybe he has an opening for an ace mechanic like yourself. Mechanic? No, this is Sergeant Quinn. I need to speak to Herr Mueller at work assignments, please. Yeah, I'll hold on. Oh, Heinrich, mein Freund. Grüß dich. Wie geht es? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm over here at uh, in processing, and I got this guy in front of me. He says he's a mechanic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, well, I'm working on his in processing paperwork now. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to let you know on that one. No, tell the captain I don't care about it. I've already made up my mind. No. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right, I'll call you back later. Tschüss. Well, what did he say? What did he say? All right, he can use a mechanic. He's got a slot for you, but uh, first, I've got to finish this paperwork. I can't send him anybody that's not been in process. Okay, okay. Well, what do you need to know? What's your job within your unit? I was the BTR driver. What's your full unit designation? I was in the... 
first motorized rifle squad, the second motorized rifle platoon, the third motorized rifle company, the fifth motorized rifle battalion, and the 44th. I cannot tell you that. Well, why not, Sergeant Catuzzo? Because our political officers told us that when we faced you Americans, we were not to discuss anything. Otherwise, when I got home, I would go to prison. Sergeant Kutuzov, you would anyway. What do you think happened to all the men who were captured by the Germans during the Great Patriotic War? What happened to all those men? They went to Siberia, Sergeant Kutuzov. They went to prison anyway. Nothing's changed over there. We know this for a fact. And your family would be affected too. Even they'd suffer. But I have no family. That would not be a problem. Well, tell me then, Sergeant Kutuzov, what do you plan to do after the war? Oh, I have always wanted to travel. It had been my dream. Well, a dream? Why do you think it has to be just a dream? This dream could be made a reality for you. What do you mean? Well, have you considered all the possibilities open to you now that you've been captured, Sergeant Kutuzov? We could look into political asylum for you. But, but I'm Russian. Oh, that doesn't make any difference. There are thousands of Russians living in the United States. I didn't know that. Sure, there are whole communities of Russians who have resettled there. They could help you find a job, a place to live, schooling. They'd even speak your language. But how is this possible? Well, we have to fill out these simple forms, and then we'll do the necessary paperwork, and you'll be halfway there. But what do I have to do to help you fill out these forms? Well, just answer a few simple questions, like, uh, what's your full unit designation? But if, if, if I answered that question, they would hunt me down, even in America. Sergeant Kutuzov, they have to know about it first. Look, I'll tell you what. This conversation will be just between you and I. No one else will know anything we've discussed. But why are you doing this for me? Sergeant Kutuzov, I'll tell you the truth. Some of those Russians who've resettled in the United States are friends of mine, and I appreciate their plight. How does it figure that I'm sitting here speaking Russian with you today? I have friends who speak Russian. Now, I know I could even write them a letter and, and they could meet you when you got there and you'd have instant friends. Well, but that would be great. Well, fine. Let's fill out these forms and they have to be done. I don't want you to be evacuated with the rest of the prisoners. Now, tell me, what's your job within your unit? I was an RPG-7 gunner. And what's your full unit designation? I'm in the second motorized rifle squad, third motorized rifle platoon, first motorized rifle battalion. What is your full unit designation? I cannot tell you that. Why can't you tell me that? Because I won't do anything that will harm my men. Sergeant, you can't do anything right now that's going to worsen the situation for them. As a matter of fact, you just might be their only hope right now. I, I don't understand. Well, think back to the ambush this morning. We know exactly where you were. We've been tracking you for days. These small unit ambush have been going on for a long time now. Where are the men that you left behind? I, I, I really don't know. Most of them were either killed or, or, or scattered. The ones that are scattered, where are they going to go? I, I, I don't know. Sergeant, your men are dangerous and close to our forces right now. And our forces are prepared to kill anything on sight. Your men are walking into killing zones and certain death. What can I do? You can help me find them. Find out who they are and what they're doing. And save their lives. But how can they be saved? Well, we can find them. Talk to them. Maybe draw their fire so they're, until their ammunition runs out. But I've got to tell the infantry units out there who's out there, what they're doing. If I don't, then they're going to be mowed down. But the, they're well trained. They will fight. Sergeant, there are no guarantees here. Certainly, someone's going to be hurt and maybe even killed. But if we can save just one life, one boy can go home in a uniform instead of a body bag. But that won't happen unless you help me out. Most of them are just, just young lads. Sergeant, we can't think about what could happen. We have to concentrate on how to help the situation. Now, the quicker we work, the better chance I have of sending out orders on time. Now, those men out there, what are their full unit designations? Second motorized rifle squad. Third motorized rifle platoon. First motorized rifle company. What's your job within your unit?
Yes, yeah, Sergeant. I'll be there as soon as I deal with this. Out. What is your last name? Weinberg. What is your first name? David. What is your rank? I'm a private. What is your service number? 441-54-7274. What is your religion? Jewish. What civilian education have you received? Two years of college. What were you studying in college? Mechanical engineering. What is your present job within your unit? I'm just a rifleman. What is your full unit designation? Yeah. I can't tell you that. Why can't you tell me that? Because my leaders, they told me not to give any information on my unit or anything like that. Your leaders? You trying to protect them? You won't tell me your full unit designation to protect them? The leaders of the comrades? The comrades that left you behind for dead? They didn't leave me out for dead. The way I see it, you were in a recon mission to recon an area that was saturated with NATO troops. You were placed at point. You got captured by the NATO troops. You got left behind by your comrades as soon as they saw the NATO troops. I don't know. I couldn't see them. That's right. The reason you couldn't see them is because they were 50 meters behind you. See, you were set up. They set you way up at front. They set you up and it worked. You found the enemy and they fled. I don't really believe that. You better believe it. You were Jewish, is that correct? Yeah, I'm the only Jew in my platoon. What, doesn't that tell you something about why they treat you that way? Now that you mention it, I've been noticing lately that I've been getting a lot of flunky jobs. You have two years of college, you tell me. Yes. You've been in the service a year and a half. Yes. And you're just a rifleman? Well, I wanted to be a mechanical engineer, but all they gave me was rifleman. They said that's all I'm suited for. Well, why aren't you doing something like mechanical engineering? I don't know why. They said that <clears throat> all they could give me was rifleman. Well, I tell you why that's what they say. You and I both know how the Russians treat the Jews, how they've been oppressing the Jews for generations, how they give the Jews the point position, how they let the Jews be up there in front, the first ones to die. If it wasn't because of our troops were so careful, you would be dead right now because you, comrade, we're nice and happy in the back, 50 meters behind you, while you're up there up front looking for the enemy and finding the enemy, okay? They thought, for sure, once we hear a shot, yeah, old David's gonna get it, we can take off running, okay? Now, we saved your butt. They left you out there to die. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I'd be thinking of a way of getting back at them. You no, know, now that you mention it, what? all these things has been happening lately give me the flunky jobs, always dirty details, cleaning out their garbage. I tell you what. Is that because I'm Jewish? Well, what do you think? I don't really know. How come uh, another guy in your squad was not placed at point? Why were you placed at point? Because probably... Why were you placed to guard that disabled BMP, that empty field? Because I'm the only Jew in my platoon. That's right. That's right. I'll be thinking about how to get back at them, okay? If I were you, I want revenge. Now, you tell me, you cooperate with me, we'll go out there and get those guys, and we'll give them a shot of discrimination. We'll set them up and have them digging latrine holes, and you can watch them doing all the dirty jobs. Now, what is your full unit designation? First Motorized Rifle Squad, second Motorized Rifle Platoon,
What is your name? Ivanov, Sergei Ivanich. What is your rank? I'm a sergeant. What is your service number? 312-1121. What was your mission at your time of capture? Oh, I'm not required to tell you that. Okay, then. Let's talk about how you were captured. Why? Why do you want to talk about that? There's nothing to talk about. Oh, but there is. There's a problem. That helicopter you shot down was a Red Cross helicopter. I would not want to be you right now, Sergeant Ivanov. What, what do you mean? You're guilty of a war crime. There were three wounded soldiers on that helicopter. What was I supposed to do? We've been spotted. Look, Sergeant, I know about the circumstances. This was your first combat mission, and you wanted to prove yourself. But when that helicopter flew overhead, you panicked, and you ordered your men to open fire. We have testimony to that fact, even from your own men. God, why did I do it? Why? Why? Look, this situation is not hopeless. There might be a way to... What? What way? Look, the situation is very serious. But if you help me, I will help you as much as I possibly can. But I cannot promise you a thing. The more you help me, the better I can assess your situation to present it to my commander. Well, what I've done was wrong. That I understand now. Well, what can I do? You can start by answering my questions. Now, what was your mission before you shot down that Red Hawk Cross helicopter? I was leading my squad on a recon mission. Very good. Now, what is your full unit designation? Oh, no. That has nothing to do with my situation. Now, look, Sergeant Ivanov. Everything has to do with your situation. The shooting down of that Red Cross helicopter was deliberate. And your men will not hang for your crime. They have already attested to the fact that it was you who gave the orders to open fire, and that you are the one they had to obey. Now, there is no one else here to put this on. Your choices are very simple. Either you cooperate or you face the consequences alone. Now, what is your full unit designation? I was with the 1st Motorized Rifle Squad, 3rd Motorized Rifle Platoon, 2nd Motorized Rifle Company, What's your last name? Shivago. Spell Shivagov. C H I V A G O V. What's your rank, Shivagov? I'm a junior sergeant. What what's going to happen to me? Well, that's what I'm here to decide. Do you know the penalties for committing war crimes, Shivagov? No. Why should why should I know? Why should I even care? I haven't done anything wrong. Well, just for your information, the penalties range from long term imprisonment to execution. Not that you'll have a choice should you be found guilty. Guilty of what? Have you ever seen an execution, Shivago? It's not a pretty sight. I don't think I'd like to be a witness to something like that. But why should I die? I haven't done anything wrong. Do these seem familiar to you, Shivago? No, I see Don't lie to me, Shivago. You'll be in a lot of trouble if you lie to me. These dog tags along with U.S. dollars are found on your person by the capturing unit. They were taken off the body of a dead U.S. soldier. The authorities don't appreciate looting of the dead. Now, if you know what's good for you, you better cooperate with me and tell me how you found these and under what circumstances. Why? How, how can I help me? Well, if you answer my questions and give me enough useful information, I can report that you are simply a victim of circumstances. And I can report how cooperative you were with me and how helpful otherwise. But I didn't even kill a guy. I didn't take those stuff off him. I took them from my sniper. Don't play games with me, Shivagov. You tell me exactly how you found these. Okay, okay. I was on a recon patrol. Me and my, my squad. It was a full unit designation of your squad. First motorized rifle squad. Second motorized rifle platoon. Fourth motorized rifle company. What was your job within your unit? They're all gone. Who's all gone, Sergeant? All of them. I mean, Pavel and, and Igor. All of them, they're all dead. It was horrible. Going up that hill, and suddenly there was a big burst of white light and a rain fire. Try calm down, Sergeant. Here, Sergeant, have a cigarette. Come on. Here. Come on. That's it, Sergeant. Come, calm down now. Just try to relax. I realize, Sergeant, you've been through a terrible, frightening experience. 
but you don't have any reason to be frightened now. No reason? No reason. I'll be killed. Well, well I'll be killed. All the fire and, 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 and smoke and, and, and shooting. And we're all going to die. No, sir, and we're not going to die. We're safe here. We're away from the fighting. This area is safe. This compound's well to the rear, Sergeant. Do you hear any guns going off? Do you hear any shelling? No. You're away from it all now. There's no more reason to be frightened. All you have to do is answer my questions. What was your job within your unit? Safe? Really safe? Yes. Away from the fighting? Yes, Sergeant. Finally safe. No more guns. No more fire. Safe at last. All you have to do is answer my questions, Sergeant. Now, what was your job within your unit? I, I, I was a squad leader. And what was your full unit designation, Sergeant? Well, I, I was in the 1st Motorized Rifle Squad, 2nd Motorized Rifle Platoon, 1st Motorized Rifle Company, 1st Motorized Rifle Battalion, Hello, Lieutenant. My name is Captain Coleman. I'm the facility commander here. I was just talking to a young man down the hall, a Private Nishenko, a very fine young soldier. Uh, is he one of yours? Yes, sir, he is. Oh, he's a fine soldier, finest I've seen around here in weeks. I couldn't help but wonder why he's not an NCO. Oh, no, no, sir. He's not in my unit. He, he isn't ready yet. He has a ways to go. Yeah. You must have some outstanding soldiers in your unit. That reflects very highly on yourself. Well, thank you very much, sir. Tell me something. It seems that leadership runs very high in your outfit. To what do you attribute that? It must have been the officer's training academy. What academy did you attend, then? I attended the Silverwolf Academy in Minsk. How'd you come out? I was number three in the class of 68. Whew. That's outstanding, but I'd, I would have thought you would have been honored graduate. What happened? Uh, well, we had two extremely sharp cadets who beat me out in the last test. Uh, but uh, I'm not disappointed. I did very well for myself. Well, it's certainly nothing to feel bad about. I see that nevertheless they chose for you the honorable duty of a combat command. Your family must be very proud of you. Yes, sir, they are very proud. Are all of the officers in your unit as highly trained and as well disciplined as you? Oh, yes. We have the finest cadre of officers. The company commander has a very easy time with all the fine leadership under him. So morale must be very high. No, not really. The troops and officers don't always see things the same way. Uh, do all the companies in the 160th Regiment have such well-trained officers? The 4th Company and the 2nd Battalion is the best. The others don't even rate. What's wrong with the other companies? I don't know. It seems that our company always seems to be able to pull out its missions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there similar rivalries between the other platoons? Mm, no, 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 not really. We have all worked together as a company and uh, we have blended very well with the second and third platoons. Well, it's good to see a company that can function as well as yours. Uh, what do you think causes this unit cohesion? Well, we have very well-trained soldiers and excellently trained officers, mm -hmm. good officers, and the combination of the two and the experience of having worked together, we have an excellent unit. Wait a minute, are you sure this is the right prisoner? This can't possibly be an officer. I certainly am, a lieutenant in the Soviet Army. Well, uh, Lieutenant, sit in that chair with your feet flat on the floor facing me. So, uh, what's your last name? Trudenko. Spell Trudenko. T-R-U-D-E-N-K-O. Well, you managed to get that right anyway. Well, Lieutenant Trudenko, I was just reading over your circumstances of capture. I was finding them quite amusing. But from one look at you, I can well imagine that you're caught quite literally with your pants down. There's no need to be insulting. Insulting? I was just stating the facts. Despite your slovenly appearance, I can't believe that a Soviet officer would allow himself to be caught in such a posture, so to speak. 
Uh, believe what you will. I'm an officer with important responsibilities. Oh, like what? Inspecting sanitation facilities? Quite a novel method you use. No, I am a motorized rifle officer. Oh, that's a good one. Did someone tell you to say that, or did you think of it all by yourself? No, I'll tell you. I'm the platoon leader of 3rd Motorized Rifle Platoon, 7th Company. Oh, and what idiot let a miserable slob like you command troops? Colonel Borisovich is not an idiot as a battalion commander. He's made some very wise decisions on who will lead his troops. What is your last name? Kaban. What is your first name, Kaban? Yosip. What is your rank? Just a private. What is your job within your unit? I can't tell you that. Well, tell me, Kaban, what were you doing when you were captured? Well, I was just out there in the light surface road, just driving my BTR, and all of a sudden, boom! The engine quit, quit running on me, and smoke started coming out from the engine compartment. That's all. And then what happened? Well, I got out of the BTR, I re got my toolbox, and as I was reaching for a tool to fix the BTR, uh, I noticed the U.S. troops were surrounding me. Why didn't you resist? Resist? How could I resist, man? I didn't have any time. I had the tools on my hands, I was all greased up, and it just all seemed like you guys knew that we were going to be there. That's right, Gabon. We knew you would be there, and it was just typical of your forces' equipment to break down just when it was needed the most. Now, you're wrong. See, we've got good equipment. Motherland provides us with the best equipment there is, so it's not the equipment. Is the oil. The oil in the BTRs are no good. Now, wait a minute, Caban. Are you trying to tell me that that piece of junk you were caught beside is your force's best equipment? I can't believe that. It wasn't my BTR spot, all right? We haven't been getting oil supplies for the BTR, and you can't expect for a BTR to run on old oil for a long time. Caban, what's happened to your supplies? Where are they? I'll tell you where they aren't. They're not where your company commander thinks they are. And you know why? It's because we've allowed your forces to rush blindly forward into a huge, deadly trap. And now we're closing that trap tighter and tighter. First cutting you off from your supplies, and then we're eliminating the trap forces, just like at Stalingrad. Well, I can't believe that. I can't believe that my CEO will tell us that we're going to be receiving oil supplies, him knowing that we ain't going to receive oil supplies. I can't believe that. Come on, think about this. How many times in the past week has your CO said that you'd be getting supplies at one time, and then later on he would say at a different time, due to unforeseen delays? Do you know what those delays were, Caban? It was us closing that trap tighter and tighter. My CO won't lie to me. Why would my CO lie to me? Just um, doesn't make any sense. I can't believe you. Why would your CO lie to you? I'll tell you why. He wants you to keep going on just a little longer so you could try to break out of that circle of steel that's closing in around you and eliminating and crushing all resistance before it. That's why. I'm a little confused now. I th it's, it's starting to make sense, but what can I do now? Uh, maybe everything is, uh, is all over for me, but I can't do nothing. I'm just a private. And here I stand. I can't do nothing. Now, Caban, your BTR is disabled. You're captured. Your forces are cut off from their supplies. And you've got to th start thinking for yourself. Your forces are defeated. There's going to be no help from the motherland for them. You've got to start looking out for yourself and your future. How are you going to survive, Gabon? What are you going to do in the future? I can help you. You can? I can. Just tell me, what is your job within your unit? It's just a driver. What is your full unit designation? I'm in the third motorized rifle squad, second motorized rifle platoon, first motorized rifle company, second motorized rifle battalion, 52nd motorized rifle regiment, 30. So, what's your full unit designation? Please, I don't want to say anything. Right? Look, we already know that you're in the third motorized rifle battalion. 2nd Motorized Rifle Regiment, 134th Motorized Rifle Division. How do you know that? I mean... To be more specific, I know that you're in the 3rd Motorized Rifle Platoon of the 7th Motorized Rifle Company. 
Look, I'm not supposed to talk. Come on, what do you think? This is a big military secret or something? I know more about you than you even know about your own self. How's your wife Svetlana doing these days anyway? Please, please, come on. Leave my family out of this. Okay, okay. Let's stick to the subject then. How's Captain Lesnici doing? You know about him too? Look, I'm telling you, we know all of this stuff already. I just want to hear it from you. Not only do I know about your commander, I even know about his drinking problem too. Yeah. He's been drinking pretty heavily lately. I... Well, so what's the lush been having the seventh company doing these days anyway? I'm not supposed to talk. Come right? on. We both know that after the losses you sustained in downtown Kemero, you've been slowed down. Now, with just a little cooperation, you can take advantage of this situation. You can make the circumstances under which you'll be spending time with us even better. Now, I'm only asking you these questions to assess your case. Now, what was your job within your unit? I can't tell you. I mean... Look, I already know you're a sniper. So what? Is it a big military secret or something? No, it's no military secret. It means nothing. Now, this morning, during the reconnaissance mission you were performing, just what did your platoon leader, Lieutenant Pokrovsky, tell you to do? How do you know Lieutenant Pokrovsky gave Look, the order? I've already told you we know all this stuff already. I just want to hear it from you. Now tell me, exactly what did he say? Well, he said, uh, uh, I should give uh, high ground sniper cover to the recon man. And I'll tell you that. Well, fine, you don't have to tell me, but what are you going to tell your superiors when you get home? What do you mean? Well, how are you going to explain the fact you were captured? But we were overwhelmed. You were overwhelmed. You had 80 rounds of ammunition left and grenades, and you couldn't. There were so many. I couldn't. How are you going to explain it? I tell them they'll understand. They'll understand. At the end of the great patriotic war, there were thousands of prisoners in situations just like yours. And when they went home, they tried to explain. They were imprisoned vanished. Look, I've got some paperwork to fill out here. I have an obligation to report to your country the date, the time, and the circumstances of your capture, as well as the location. But with this on your records, oof. But they will. They just have to. Face it, Sergeant. The oath you swore says that you would re defend your country bravely, sparing no blood, without regard for your own life. You broke the spirit of your own oath. It looks like rough times ahead for you. Oh, my God. Oh, uh, look, Sergeant, Sergeant, the situation isn't hopeless. You're going to have to help yourself here. That's all there is to it. But how? This is hopeless. No, 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 it isn't hopeless. Let's suppose that the circumstances that we send back to your country says that when we found you, you were unconscious. And when you came to, it took four, no, it took five men to hold you down. Well, that could make a difference. Yes, I suppose, but... You could even be repatriated early, with the explanation that you were a severe discipline problem. And we had to send you back. Otherwise, your uncooperative attitude would spread to the other prisoners. You'll, you'll do that? Well, I'll let you write your own explanation. You'll probably get some kind of medal for bravery or something. But it's going to have to be logical. Okay, I'll... Try. Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, I'm going to be forging documents here. You've got to understand that this has to remain a secret between you and me. Okay? Now, you're going to have to understand that I'm helping you out. Okay? And I'm going to expect the same courtesy from you. I've got a job to do. I've got some paperwork to get out of the way to prepare for your repatriation records. But how can I help you? Well, I just need a few routine answers for the reforms, and then I'll start getting the record straight on your circumstances of capture. Uh, but we're going to have to work fast. My boss needs his information real soon. Well, what is this routine stuff? Oh, nothing. Just some simple questions like, uh, what was your job within your unit? I'm a squadron leader. Oh, we're so terrible about that. Okay? Now, as soon as we're done with this paperwork, I'm going to give you a pencil and some paper, and you can get to work on those circumstances. Now, what was your full unit designation? Uh, I was in 2nd Motorized Rifle Squad, 3rd Motorized Rifle Platoon. What's your last name? Romanov. What's your first name? Havel. 
What's your job within your unit? I can't talk to you about that. Well, look, Romanov, until we get these in-processing papers done, you won't be able to join the other prisoners here in this camp. But I can't. Look, Romanov, you need to straighten up and take a cold, hard look at what's going around here now. Our forces are winning across the board. Looks like you're losing already. This war can't last much longer. No, that can't be possible. I heard that we were pushing your force further west than we could follow. That's rich, Romanov. Look, this is the 20th century. America has made more technological advances than your people could ever dream possible. Why, the, the Soviet forces are being ripped apart right now by the NATO units. How do you figure we captured you so easily? Based on the speed of the BTR and the condition of the road, we knew to the minute when you'd be landing at that location. No, I can't believe that. It's not possible. Believe it, Romanov. We've located your main body. Can't you hear those guns right now? Those are the big guns pounding the hell out of those people. You were lucky you were captured when you were. No use. I might as well kill myself. I can't go back there alive. I can't believe the whole body. Yes, and the casualties are mounting higher and higher as we sit here, Romanov. The longer you sit here feeling sorry for yourself, the more of your comrades are gonna die. Now I ask you, what is your job within your unit? What's the use of telling you the reason now about my job in unit? There's every reason, Romanov. Aren't you even listening to what I said? I said there are people dying out there. Your people. And here you sit feeling sorry for yourself. Don't you care anything about your country? Russia's tottering to its knees right now, Romanov. Communism didn't work. The flower of your young men are lying out there on the battlefield, dead and, and mangled. And here you sit feeling sorry for yourself. All you can worry about is what are people going to think of me when I get home after the war? Don't you know there are going to be few enough young men left in Russia as it is? You will be needed. Young men still out there alive on the battlefield will be needed. Men will be needed to build things and take charge. And here you sit feeling sorry for yourself. Now get a hold of yourself, Romanov, quick. What was your job within your unit? I was a squad leader. What's your full unit designation? First motorized rifle squad, second motorized rifle platoon, third motorized rifle company. Guard, give me the captive tag and all documents pertaining to this source to include any previous interrogation reports. Guard, where's the letter? Oh. I thought I could keep it for a souvenir. No, you have to give up all the documents. It's on the captive tape. Okay, guard, this is a category B document. I'm going to put a cover sheet marked tentative secret. I want you to take this to TC A and E. Okay. Uh, and also, this is a letter. I need you to take that to the translation department and bring back the original one copy. All right. Okay, guard. May I have the document? Thank you. Has the source been treated in accordance with the Geneva Convention? Of course. Okay. What is the physical condition of the source? Well, he was wounded in the left leg. Has he been uh, treated and released for interrogation by a proper medical authority? Yes, he has. Has the source been silenced and segregated? Yes. Okay. What other weapons and equipment were captured with the source? Just what was listed on the captive tag. What is the disposition of the weapons and equipment? Well, everything was evacuated through supply channels, except for his protective mask. We gave that back to him. Okay, very good. 
What other enemy personnel were captured with the source? Seven. Seven. How many uh, enemy personnel were killed or wounded in action when the source was captured? Two were killed in action. Two were killed. What uh, friendly casualties were suffered at the source's time of capture? None. What type of uh, clothing is the source wearing? Oh, standard Soviet uniform. What uh, markings or insignia is on the, are on the uniform? I think he has sergeant rank and motorized rifle insignia. What is the condition of the source's clothing? Uh, it's somewhat worn and a little dirty. What comments can you relate from others who have handled the source? Well, the capturing unit said he seemed a bit terrified when they got a hold of him. Okay. For the period of time that you've been with the source, what has been his attitude or behavior? Well, every time he hears a loud noise, he screams. Otherwise, he obeys all orders. He sits in. What requests have been made by the source? None. Okay. What uh, comfort items have, has the source requested? Nothing. Uh, what comfort items were given to the source? Nothing, of course. What adi uh, additional information can you relate about the source? Nothing. When, w uh, when was the source last trip search? About 30 minutes ago. OK. Tell you what, at this time, I want the source strip searched in a place where I can see him, but he can't see me. OK. So why don't we go do that now? OK. What was the result of the strip search? Oh, nothing was found. OK, at this time, uh, why don't you go out and uh, give me a couple minutes to repair and then bring the source in, OK? All right. All right, Caban, we're finished for right now. I'm going to go check with the medical officer and see how your men are doing, and then I'll get back with you and let you know how they are. Is that OK? Yeah. All right. Now, the information you're giving me today is going to be checked for its truthfulness and accuracy. Well, I haven't lied to you. No, I hope not. Is there anything you want to add or delete at this time? No. All right. Now, you're going to be talked to again either by myself or by one of my other colleagues. Now, here's your ID booklet. Hang on to this because you're going to need it in the compound. Guard, evacuate this document with the source. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and consider becoming a Patreon member for the ASP. Please check out the ASP Patreon page.